When I first started watching Adult Swim, I had to have been 12 at the time, and my main reason for getting into Cartoon Network's mature block was mainly to watch the anime that was uncut. Yet for some reason, most of Adult Swim's anime usually aired after midnight, so most of the time I would sit and watch the shows that I originally made on their block. Most of the shows on there didn't quite catch my attention because 1. I was 12 so I didn't really get the humor, and 2. Most of the show's animation was crude and obscure that I couldn't really get into it. Of course it wasn't until years later that I started appreciating these shows because of what Adult Swim was trying to start as a channel, especially when Toonami had returned to the public eye. I say all this because Adult Swim truly came around with the shows they created, and the most prolific one was Rick and Morty. At first, I wasn't too drawn to it because I was worried it was going to end up like another Family Guy and Simpsons show. But after witnessing the first season, it made me realize how completely wrong I was. And I thank God for being wrong till this day. Why? Because it's a show that defies the way we see crew comedy and animation in more ways than others realize. Take for example that if you somewhat just type in Rick and Morty on YouTube, you will get thousands upon thousands of conspiracy videos that question what the series is really about, and if there's a bigger picture to be said within the confines of the show. Since Rick and Morty is more than just a crew comedy, but rather a show with deeper meaning than most fans realize. And that, my friends, is what we're here to talk about today. So let's grab our portal guns, meet our parallel selves, and remember to get swifty as we talk about the reality and meaning of Rick and Morty. Carlo! (laughs) Rick and Morty would originally start off as a parody short film, which was based off of the 1985 film Back to the Future. That was created by Justin Rowland for the Film Festival Channel 101. It wasn't until later when Adult Swim approached Dan Harmon for television show ideas. He teamed up with Rowland and developed the program based on the short, replacing the characters of Doc with Rick and Marty with Morty. And from there, the wacky adventures began between grandfather and grandson, with Rick taking Morty on several adventures like escaping from an autonomy-themed amusement park towards meeting alternate versions of themselves from a parallel universe. Now, on the surface of the show, Rick and Morty can still be seen as a comedy parody of Back to the Future. But what others don't realize is that Rick and Morty displays a true fact of Doc and Marty's real adventures could have been and the true repercussions of messing with the confines of reality. And this is where the show takes a major turn for the crazy. That's listening to us right now is allowed to submit a five minute first episode of any kind of television show that they want. In ways Rick and Morty have shown to define the spectrum of reality is in episode 6 titled Rick Potion Number 9, which starts off with Morty having an idea of his high school crush Jessica to fall in love with him for the flu season dance. He asks Rick for assistance as he gives him a potion with the essence of oil, which is a species of rodent that made for life. Sounds easy, right? Morty gives Jessica the serum and she falls in love with him. But of course, with Rick's inventions, they never work out as planned. You see, with everybody having the flu and Jessica exposed to the serum, causes it to go airborne, leaving everybody infected and desperate enough to mate with Morty. Of course, those who are related to Morty, like his family, are unaffected. With the whole world exposed to the virus, Rick devises a plan to cure everybody by using another species of DNA to counteract it, which of course makes the situation worse, and as a result, everybody is turned into these weird chimera creatures called Cronenbergs. With options limited, Rick has an idea so that him and Morty can still get out of this situation unscathed. And this is where things truly get weird. It's then Rick and Morty travel to an alternate dimension where everything is exactly the same, except the Rick and Morty of this universe are dead seconds later from an invention gone wrong. Now fans, I can't tell you how much level wrong that is. I don't know what's worse, Rick and Morty literally burying themselves. When I was your age, (laughs) we buried ourselves. The fact they're living in a universe where they technically don't belong in a more universal sense and living out their days as doppelgangers. Even Justin Rowland has called this his favorite episode of the first half of the first season because he thought it was paced well and due to the fact that how he loved how insane it got in the end. Even towards the end, Morty even questions Rick about the reality they left behind. Fair way to divvy it up. Rick! What about the reality we left behind? But the crew moral is not to think about it. You see, you can keep thinking about if there was another way to stop certain things from happening in reality, but the fact is you can't, and you need to move on on your own unless you keep thinking of the what ifs. 
Rick and Morty explain this concept on such a huge scale in this episode, it's almost scary when you think about it to the point you wonder if this is even a comedy show anymore. Now at first you would think with a show this outrageous, the episode wouldn't affect the rest of the series. Well, not really. In fact, the show's episodes do correlate with each other. You would think with the series being mostly focused on comedy, it wouldn't really need a main storyline, but in fact it does, which grabs so many people's attention. You see, each episode stands on its own, but when you watch them in sequence, they make more sense. Other animations similar to Rick and Morty have done this concept like regular show showing the love relations between Mordecai and Morgret or Adventure Time on revealing the origins of Finn's people and the history of the world itself they live in. A good example of Rick and Morty display this notion is in the episode titled Rickety Minutes where Rick and Morty watch TV from different dimensions and infinite realities. During the minutes of them watching TV, Jerry and Beth figure out a different version of themselves as Jerry is a famous actor and Beth is a world-class surgeon. As a result that their lives could have been better, they revealed to Summer that she was an unwanted pregnancy and that her birth prevented them from achieving their goals. This greatly upsets Summer, and she announces her plans to run away. This is where the show surprises me, where at some point Morty gets wind of this and attempts to counsel her. After she attempts to push him away, Morty shows Summer the graves that he dug up in their backyard. He reveals the truth that the Morty from her reality is dead, and that he is not, in fact, her brother, but rather a brother from another reality. Now, between this episode and the potion episode, there was only a one episode gap. So at the time I watched it, I thought they were going to ignore the fact they crossed the mentions. But towards the next episode, they speak of it. To me, it was so surprising because I figured most of these episodes wouldn't in a sense not connect with each other. To me, this makes the characters grow and actually develop as the series goes on. Of course, the characters somewhat remain the same, so the show can remain funny. But it gives people so many questions to the show that draw them to the next. I know it did with me, which goes on to our next topic, with meaning within the show. Daddy... Where do babies come from? The stork. What stork? He has rocket feet. They propel him at speed so great that he doesn't age. He's like God, but he eats herring. Now, just like the characters Rick and Morty are two sides of a coin, so are their creators, Justin Rowland and Dan Harmon. Throughout episode after episode, Rick and Morty's creators display expressive philosophy. But while it's uncertain if they believe in the philosophies they've referenced onto the series, one may believe they somewhat question these thoughts. The thoughts of what's true meaning and how to go about living it. You can see it in bits of this meaning within themselves during adult swim segments. Christ, what happens when we die? What happens when we all die? Do you guys worry about that shit at night? Knowledge that nothing matters, while accurate it gets you nowhere. So their level of belief within these shows are somewhat embedded within them. Now when I was studying the creator's habits for this review, it made me think of what a good friend of mine once said, that art in its purest form is a way of expressing your thoughts and feelings, it giving life to it. In the show Rick and Morty, Justin and Dan have a chance to express that type of meaning within the characters. Characters they gave life to. But the one person that shows the most references of philosophical knowledge is Rick Sanchez, the character that holds the seams of the show's existence. Now mind you, Morty does this aspect as well in the series within the Rickety Minutes episode where he explains the truth to his sister about reality, stating, Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. Come watch TV. Which resembles a quote from Jean-Paul Charest, who was a key figure in the philosophy of existentialism and phenomenology. But throughout the show's integrity, Rick throughout the series has shown the most philosophical notions, such as forms of determinism, nihilism, and the work of Frederick. You see this in Rick's behavior in many incidents, such as figuring out your purpose. What is my purpose? You pass butter! Oh my god. And how aware he is by breaking the fourth wall. Why don't we all split up and look for it in groups of three, kids? We'll be right back. Now at first you believe this is just the creator's way of saying, hey, look at Rick talking to the audience. See how funny that is? But when you look at it from a different perspective, it just shows how high of an intelligence he is. He's aware of the fact of what he is, but consumed by the thought of it. That's why we see Rick taking so many different amount of drugs and already drunk in pretty much every episode. It's this sad disposition of Rick needing to fill the void in his character moves on to our next topic, which is the negative aspects of the show. trying to make us all scared like Pierce Brosnan in Dante's Peak. Now, one thing I can find that can be the strongest asset is the dark tone the show brings upon itself. In most episodes of Rick and Morty, tend to start off pretty average, while the others can be really dramatic and intense. In the season 3 premiere episode, The Rick Shame Redemption, where Rick single-handedly destroys the Galactic Federation and the Citadel of Ricks, which displays the show's most dark humor and nihilism it can muster, with every Rick and Morty in existence being attacked by the Federation, and Rick defined the concept of the only person who can beat me 
is me, where Rick ends up defeating himself, which of course defies all matter of logic on so many levels. Yet, it makes you wonder about Rick's character. If you look at it from this episode and past seasons, does he truly believe in the concept of nihilism? Because we know he's an extreme pessimist and can perform radical skepticism remarks, which is certain in his character. You gotta ask yourself, what are the odds this is legit, not just some big lie we're all telling ourselves because we're afraid to die alone? Because you know, that's exactly how we all die. Alone. Oh boy. Oh, no, Dad. Jesus. But a true Neelius believes in nothing, have no loyalties, and no purpose other than perhaps an impulse to destroy. Yet we see Rick doing the opposite of most of those things. Well, except the destroy part. We do see that. Ah! Master Rick! Remember when you weren't going to shoot me? <laughs> But it still brings up the fact about the negative aspects. Rick, in a sense, is the human spectrum of everyone else's thought pattern, that being a contradiction. Having a character or characters have this negative notion makes them relatable to the audience and shows they can develop as the series goes on. But it makes you forget what the show is truly about, which was supposed to be a comedy. Now don't get me wrong, I love the way Justin and Dan have written the series because it defies the formula of most shows out right now. The most astounding way I believe the show defined the negative simply beautiful is in the weirdly upbeat Me Seeks and Destroy episode, where Morty strikes a bet with Rick after a traumatic adventure where Morty begins leading his own adventure. Rick then agrees to the bet to cease complaining if Morty fails. Midway during their adventure, the duo head to a tavern to stop for a drink, where Morty confronts Rick over his constant negativity before heading to the bathroom. There he meets Mr. Jellybean, an at first friendly character who restrains Morty when he attempts to leave and tries to rape him. Morty fends him off but is shaken. Meanwhile, Rick is beginning to enjoy himself. He wins several hands of cards, collecting a sizable amount of money. Morty begs Rick to go home and admits losing to the bet. Now this is where the transition gets interesting. You look at Rick's face and even though he didn't witness what transpired in the bathroom, you can just look from his eye motion and looking at Mr. Jellybean's condition, he has a good idea why Morty looks so emotional. Even though that part of the episode seemed so dark, it was still able to find relief at the end of the episode by having Rick show good development with him displaying a kinder human side to his character and finding a way out of the episode's dark theme to being lighthearted and funny as the show's intention was. This concept happens in several episodes and keeps its originality from most shows, but Rick and Morty's dark theme doesn't end there. This is just the beginning. Because of now, Rick and Morty is currently on season 3, and judging from the first few episodes, I can already tell how insane this series is going to be for future episodes. Yet with all the insanity the series delivers, it defies the spectrum of most shows. When a show like this gives us the thought to think about what happens next, or leaves us questions unanswered, you can't help from think how drawn you are into liking a series. And I believe that's what gives true meaning onto the show's purpose. But with that being said, this review is coming to a close, and if any of you want to talk about which show Rick and Morty might do a parody of in future episodes, please let me know on the comment section below or hit me up on any of my social media contacts below on the description box. Lastly, if you can, be sure to give a like and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. I've been working really hard on ideas for future videos, so showing support on my channel by subscribing and liking really helps for this channel to grow. But until then guys, I will see you in my next review and take care.